Shalom everyone, welcome back to another predestined, predestined kingdom ministry or ministries, Moses. The dead one or the alive one? I pray that I'm supposed to say and get off in Jesus Christ's name, I pray, amen. Welcome back to another predestined, predestined kingdom ministry or ministries international videos. I am Kenithia J. Okay, removing obstacles, the perfect law of liberty. And so he actually references James, the book of James 1 verse 19 through 27 and Psalm 19 for 7. The law of the Lord is perfect or perfect converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Okay. In James 1 verse 19, it goes into what's needed to endure these trials that God gives us and how not to only be hearers of this word but also doers of the word which is something I read in the, in the beginning of the new Bible studies thing sorry Bible study lessons is that Pastor James wanted us to be doers of the word and not just a hearer of this word. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Doers, not only hearers. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your soul but be doers of the word not only hearers deceiving yourselves you hear the word you repeat it back but your actions don't change you hear the scripture you tell thousands of people the scripture but inwardly you still have the same heart that God is trying to work on and change and so, for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. Vanity. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he really is. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This one will be blessed in what he does. Okay. Not if a false prophet make you have memory problems and you forget, then God say, oh no, you forgot. It's your fault. Moses. <laughs> Every time you look around, he, this man be afflicted forgetfulness through spiritual attack and all kind of stuff and that's what God is saying he's not gonna do he's not gonna allow you to be a Christian leader and trick people out of him or heaven but he's gonna judge you for even trying to trick somebody like that or change the words that he's really trying to say removing obstacles Exodus 14 29 Exodus 14 29 but the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left and Joshua rose early in the morning and they removed from Shittim and came to Jordan it sounded like <laughs> They removed from a shitty land and went to Jordan. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> they removed, it's S-H-I-T-T-I-M, Shittim. And came to Jordan, he and all the children of Israel, and lodged there before they passed over. Before they went to a new land. 
And it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the host. And they commanded the people, saying, When ye see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priests, the Levites, bearing it, then ye shall remove from your place and go after it. Come on, Jordan. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Come not near it unto it, that ye may know the way by which ye must go. For ye have not passed this way heretofore. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do. I receive God. I receive it, Lord. Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. And Joshua spake unto the priests, saying, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass over before the people. And they took up, I can't, I can't even be excited no more. I'm too, in, I need too much shit. <laughs> need to eat every day. We need, like, you can't, I can't even fucking be excited no more. <laughs> you be fucking sexually aroused here and there. I can't even be excited too much. But this man really show up or provide. That's how bad it is over here. <sighs> and so the Lord said unto Joshua, This day I will begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as he was with Moses, he is also with me. As he was with them, as he was with you, God is with me. God is with you. So you don't pick and choose how he handle people because he's God. You don't choose to punish somebody when God said he gave them grace for their disobedience, but that's why he gave us grace. We fell short to the scripture that he can't deny himself and that he put in the word. But that's what he's there for, the cross, the finished work. So ultimately, Jesus Christ can decide how things go down. Not a man and not a woman, but ultimately he's the savior that still speaks and moves through the Holy Spirit. And thou shalt command the priests that bear the Ark of the Covenant, saying, When ye are come to the brink of the water of Jordan, ye shall stand in the Jordan. The priest shall what? Stand behind Jordan. The priest shall what? <laughs> just, uh, just, that's not what y'all been doing. Y'all been fighting this thing, trying to break us up as soon as God put us together. The priests are supposed to stand still in Jordan. And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, Come hither and hear the words of the Lord your God. Come hither and hear the words of the Lord your God. The Lord your God. Did you get a new God? Did you start worshiping somebody else? Come and hear the words of the Lord your God. Come on, Holy Spirit. And so, Joshua, Isha, yeah, yeah, Lord. And Joshua said, Hereby ye shall know that the living God is among you, and that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Hivites, Hivites and the Perizzites, Girgashites and the Amorites and the Jebusites. Can't pronounce those names. So behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth passeth over before you into Jordan. Now, therefore, take you 12 men out of the tribes of Israel, out of every tribe, a man. And it shall come to pass as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth. Of all the earth, Jesus Christ, the Lord, the I am that I am, they shall rest in the waters of Jordan. 
okay? That the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand upon and heap. And it came to pass when the people removed from their tents to pass over Jordan and the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people. And as they that bear the Ark were come unto Jordan and the feet of the priests that bear the Ark were dipped in the brim of the water for Jordan overfloweth all his banks all the time of his harvest. And so this is the word of the Lord. In our Christian lives, we will face many obstacles. There will be health problems, people problems, work problems, school problems, and especially sin problems. Just as a regular obstacle course is beneficial for our bodies, the obstacles Christians face can also be valuable. Facing life's obstacles can help us to develop stronger spiritual muscles, increase our spiritual endurance, and our spiritual agility. We must learn to remove the obstacles in our lives. Psalm 66 verse 6. 666. He turned the sea into dry land. They God is speaking on judgment. It's so much stuff here. And he not just speaking to Jordan for not manifesting or providing before he manifests. But he's speaking to the priest that when God said to stand in Jordan or to stand behind Jordan, you told me, Jimmy, you told me, Jason, you told me, Alex, you told me this one. And so God is speaking to everybody. You are to stand in and behind Jordan. He turned the sea into dry land. They went through the flood on foot. There did we rejoice in him. God turned the dry land into a whole flood. He turned the sea, sorry. He turned the sea into dry land. They went through the flood on foot. There did we rejoice in him. God is removing all obstacles. He did it with Moses and the children of Israel. That's what they're re referencing back to. When God delivered his people from Moses or with Moses, depending on who the analogy applies to in your life, Mine is Moses is the Pharaoh because that's who he want to go by. It's like psychologically he's telling himself, I'm here for the Lord and I'm doing this. But you can't let go of something God keeps telling you. She don't want to go back there. Stop telling her you're hurting her finances. You're giving her all of this devil activity. You being a murderer, destroying her life because she don't want to marry your choice. That's not God. But he decides and he's telling you to stand in and stand behind Jordan. Like he been doing. And then y'all change what he's actually physically saying in that moment because it's not written in the word. And that's where your uncomfortability comes in at as a servant because you can't feel it. But a shot You can't walk by sight yourself and understand that God is speaking to you. And so you have the enemy within you. Okay, Joshua 7 for 13, up sanctify the people and say sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, there is an accursed thing in the midst of thee. O Israel, thou canst not stand before thine enemies until ye take away the accursed thing from among you. Joshua 7 for 13. 
And so what is it is that you're a cursed thing? Is it you not letting go of where God is telling you to let go? And then you keep telling somebody else what to let go. And God keeps saying, I gave them grace. Who are you to speak over God? And to keep telling them Bible, God is speaking. He's not denying himself. He's like, yes, I wrote all of these words, but yes, I'm also speaking right now in the now. And I'm saying my grace is more sufficient than you prophesying somebody can't have something. Because God is the, is the one in control. But not prophet Joshua, not prophet Moses, but God. And where he wants to put an exception and say it's okay, you are not to fight him unless you claim the disobedience. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing for a chain. God speaking, man. For a chain, the son of Carmi, the son of. Zabdi, the son of Zerai of the tribe of Judah, took off the accursed thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. And Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside Rico, yeah, which is beside Bet Haven on the east side of Bethel, and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed Ai. And they turned to Joshua and said him, or unto him, Let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai. And make not all the people to labor thither, for they are but few. So there went up thither of the people <laughs> that mean? about 3,000 men okay and they fled before the men of AI and AI was actually a victory excuse me it's victories it's vi God wants his people to win he is removing obstacles the enemy from where he has within and it's time for you to win and the men of Ai smote of them about 36 men, for they chased them from before the gate even unto Shebarim, and smote them in the going down, wherefore the hearts of the people melted and became as water. And Joshua rent his clothes and fell to earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord until the eventide. He and the elders of Israel and put dust upon their heads. And Joshua said at last, O Lord God, wherefore thou hast at all brought this people over Jordan to deliver us into the land of the Amorites to destroy us. Would to God we had been content and dwelt on the other side of Jordan. Lord, what shall I say when Israel turneth their backs against their enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it and shall environ us round and cut off our name from the earth. And what wilt thou do unto thy great name? So here they got, they said, Lord, when we go to Jordan, like you telling us, we're going to encounter all hell. This one's going to come again. Come on, Holy Spirit. <laughs> this one's gonna threaten not to feed us this one's gonna um x just gonna keep manifesting causing hardships this one is gonna be a false prophet to help the ex but when we go to jordan like you told us we have to face calamity we have to face hardships and then the jordan river not even providing and the lord said to joshua get thee up wherefore <laughs> Oh, Kevin Hart, laugh at my pain. And so, get up there up, sorry, get thee up, wherefore liest, you're a liar. <laughs> oh, 
thank you, Jesus, for the laughs. I needed it. I'm done. Israel have sinned, and they are also transgressed, or to have transgressed the Lord's covenant, which he commanded them, for they have taken off the accursed thing, and also they stole. They, st they were thieves. And also have stolen and disassembled also, and they have put it even among their own stuff. So they took the people's stuff, they stole it, and then said, we're going to act like it's ours. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies because they were cursed. Neither will I be with you anymore, except you destroy the accursed from among you. Yes. Sanctify yourselves tomorrow, for thus saith the Lord God of Israel. Something is accursed among you. And in order, you can't just be still in doing, because your altar is idolatry based, you're using deities and stuff to steal, kill, and to destroy spiritually. And so that's the accursed thing. God speaking to somebody. That little occult thing, everybody would. <laughs> I gotta go. My mom walked in the house. Ain't no telling if the Holy Spirit speaks done started talking to her or not. <laughs> I'm serious. I gotta go, guys. But it was right in the middle of a good word. And so, God is saying, put away the accursed thing from among you. Get out the occults. Stop ganging up with this one to do against that one. In the morning, therefore, ye shall be brought according to your tribes, according to who you are associating yourself with. Actions speak louder than words. You can say, thank you, Jesus, claim grace, call on God, but your actions aren't doing that. That's just words. And that's what he's saying. Don't be like the hypocrite that fill up their mouths with a bunch of words, but your heart And the family which the Lord shall take shall come by households. I told you, there's no one person could go in the group, but everybody who in the group doing group bait, the whole household, the whole family, since nobody could decipher that's not God, but everybody jumping on one side. And so the whole household, the Lord shall come and take. And the household which the Lord shall take shall come man by man. This is good, Lord. And it shall be that he that is taken with the accursed thing shall be burnt with fire. And he and all that he hath. And so not only is God coming to take, the, uh, take you, but he's taking the accursed thing as well. I don't know what you're doing. And you have, what, what are you doing? I don't know, because Kenithia minds her business all day. <laughs> so whatever cursed thing it is, you know right from wrong. You know what idolatry is. You know what stealing is. You know what provoking someone to wrath all day is. You know what a lie is. And so whatever cursed thing, God is saying he's taking the whole house and... Because you have transgressed the covenant of the Lord and because he has wrought folly in Israel. So there's judgment here. And so Joshua rose up early in the morning and brought Israel by their tribes and the tribe of Judah was taken. And he brought the family of Judah and he took the family of Zaharites. And he brought the family of the Zaharites man by man and Zabadee was taken. And when he brought his household man by man, and Achan, the son of Carmi, and the son of Zabdi, it's like, it's Achan, but it's like no E. It could be a con, it could be a can, it could be Achan, like, <laughs> 
And Joshua said unto Akon, a chain, my son, give. My son, give. Who you talking? You talking to him to give? Shut up. To who? <laughs> to who? We receive. We receive. My son, give, says the Lord. Your name could be Joshua, your name could be A-Chain, your name could be Jordan, your name could be this one. My son, give. This is the third time this morning. You are to give to the needy and to the poor. Not to oppress them, keep them in bondage, or tell how they shouldn't receive. But he's saying, my son, I'm, apporting, I'm, I'm sending you to give to her. Give. Yeah, Lord. Hmm. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and thus, and thus have I done. When I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonian garment and 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of 50, 50 we've been saying 50 so damn much, I don't know if it's good or bad no more. Of 50 shekels weight. Then I coveted them and took them, and behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent, and the silver under it. So he has it. He not broke. He's like a millionaire, like of his time. He got it. And so God is coming to him in this part of the message, and he's speaking to somebody. He said, My son, give. She shouldn't be going through all of that and y'all watching and nobody could give. I don't care if her mom said no. I don't care if your people said no. God is telling you guys to give. And so Joshua sent messengers and they ran unto the tent and behold it was hid in his tent and silver under it. He had it. And they took them out of the midst of the tent and brought them unto Joshua and unto the children of Israel and laid them out before the Lord. And Joshua, uh-uh. You got to go back in there. And Joshua and all Israel with him took a chain or a chain, a, a con, the son of Zerai, and the silver and the garment and the wedge of gold and his sons and his daughters and his oxen and his asses and his sheep and his tent and all that he had. And they brought them into the valley of anchor. And oh, so somebody here, God is ushering you to give everything. He's probably been doing that. Like the moment you didn't give. the Okay. The moment you didn't give what the Lord told you to give. It's like he multiplied what he wanted you to give. And so now it's like you didn't give nothing to God because you didn't give your all. You didn't give what you could to somebody. I got to wrap it up. <laughs> And Joshua and Israel, okay, I said that. And Joshua said, why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall see this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones and burnt them with fire. After they had stoned with stones, they burnt them with fire. And they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger. Wherefore, the name of that place was called the Valley of Anchor unto this day. So when the man gave like the Lord said to give, then God took away his fury and wrath. But until that man had given like God told him to give, God was very wrathful upon this man. I gotta go. My mom asked me to wrap it up. I just want to be respectful, guys. After Joshua pleaded with the Lord in prayer, the Lord responded by saying he would withdraw himself from the Israelites if they did not remove the accursed thing from among the camp, the enemy within. The accursed thing was, they, was them fighting themselves. It was an enemy within them. 
They had to go against what God was telling them. To See, that's what God is saying. Y'all so busy trying to say what Kenithia doing wrong and God speaking to all of y'all. 22, 35, 10, Alex. You have your own accursed thing within. You, you're not adjusting when you see it's God speaking to you, but you're still caring about other people's opinions, looks, and how they care about how you respond to the Lord. The accursed thing is you fighting the enemy within you. I pray y'all have a blessed day, okay? Shalom.